as Euro moves from power. Iran warns airlines to avoid its airspace for three hours on Thursday over military drills, Egypt says. Uh, so today, uh, today's Thursday, uh, the Iranian military is doing major military drills and airlines are being told uh, it would be wise to avoid our airspace during this particular window, during the drills. Uh, we're, we're moving in that direction of the commencement of fighting. And then uh, CNN is reporting uh, Hezbollah poised to strike Israel independent of Iran. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the story. I'll tell you what I think about this, uh, but we'll give you the CNN perspective first. Well, as Rick said, Hezbollah is looking increasingly like it may strike Israel independent, whatever Iran may intend to do. Two sources familiar with the intelligence told CNN. Uh, the article from CNN goes on to say that the Lebanon-based militant group is moving faster than Iran in its planning and is looking to strike Israel in the coming days, one of the sources said. Iran, meanwhile, appears to be working out how it plans to respond. Multiple officials have told CNN. Now, one military official told CNN that Iran had made some, but not all, of the preparations that the U.S. would expect to see in advance of a major attack on Israel. But given Lebanon's proximity to Israel as its direct neighbor to the north, Hezbollah could act with little or no notice, the second source familiar with the intelligence said, which is not true of Iran. It's not clear how or if Iran and Hezbollah the nation's most powerful proxy are coordinated on a possible attack right now, the person added, and there is a sense among some officials that the two may not be entirely aligned on how to move forward on this. Don't blame the doc. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe it. Uh, Hezbollah would be uh, incredibly foolish and stupid uh, to launch an attack on Israel oh. without coordinating it with Iran. Yes. Uh, they, they, they're going to get one chance of taking out Israel, and they've got to do it together, and even that's not guaranteed. And not only that, you've got the Houthis, too, and you've got the other players in the mix, the uh, uh, the militant guard in, in Iraq, the yes, uh, Iraqi resistance yes. forces. Uh, you've got uh, Syria, which yes. possibly could get involved in this fight. Don't right. hold it out. Syria could get back in. You know, the Golan Heights belongs to Syria. They want their land back. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I just can't, I can't imagine Hezbollah uh, getting so eager for this war to start at the base they start shooting without the rest of the team uh, coordinating with them. I, militarily uh, speaking, it would just be an extremely foolish action um, for one country to take on another major country. Uh, and again, it's not Lebanon. It, it's it's a faction inside Lebanon. Right. Uh, a, a highly uh, well armed faction, more armed than Lebanon. <laughs> yes, more. Yes, they have more weapons than the country of Lebanon. Uh, another one. This is a Jerusalem Post. Netanyahu warns of preemptive attack as Tehran speaks of Israel's annihilation. So yesterday, the Iranian military commander said, "Hey, don't." Don't uh, make any mistakes about it. Uh, we are, our goal is the annihilation of Israel. Really strong words. Yes. It wasn't that, hey, we're, this, this is going to be a, a, a limited uh, retaliatory strike. He, he used the word annihilation. Netanyahu responded back saying, well, if you're talking about our annihilation, then I'm going to talk about a preemptive strike. Right. Because I may annihilate you before you annihilate us. So th there. So we also have to factor in the possibility that Israel and the United States yes. jointly launch an attack on Iran. Yes. Possibly this weekend. And really, these two stories here uh, are both related because if Iran had established coordination with Hezbollah, that would give reason for Netanyahu to make that first strike. Yes. application wouldn't it absolutely so yes, they, it's course. better for them to keep it in the cloud and keep it, it fuzzy and obviously israel and the u.s uh, military eyes are watching everything that moves in in iran right they're looking for any evidence that uh military personnel equipment moving rockets missiles planes 
Is there any activity going on that indicates that a strike is about to happen? Now, they're doing a military drill right now. You can right. be sure Israel is on full alert right now with that Iranian military drill on the way. Because they know the way the game is played. Yeah. Uh, military drills can go hot. Yes. And suddenly it goes from drill to a uh, real attack. But, again, what I want to get back to is the possibility that Netanyahu may order a preemptive strike on Iran any day. It could be today, it could be this weekend. And there's the possibility that the United States may participate in it. Or at least the possibility that uh, Israel will create a false flag situation that drags the United States into that into that war. And that's uh, really the goal of Israel, to get the U.S. involved. Well, if, if you think any of this is, a, you know, the possibility of uh, international criminal court arrest warrants for Netanyahu, the uh, cancellation of, of uh, diplomatic relations from various nations in Israel, uh, the calls for independent state, for Palestine, if you think this is causing Netanyahu to rethink the killing of children in Gaza? Well, all I can say is you're underestimating the cruelty and the wickedness of Benjamin Netanyahu because they are killing Gaza children every day and they don't care. Nope. In fact, I think they're doing it because they want that war. It's, it's in your face. It's saying, it's saying to the Arabs, look what we do. Look at the way we kill children, and you don't have what it takes to come here and fight us. Right. Isn't that what it's about? Yes. We're killing children. And you're, not you're, not, you're, not, you're not stopping us. You're not standing in the way. And, and you've got small churches saying, yeah, you know, we really want to starve to death two million people. Yeah, the only response really from the West is, don't eat so much. You know, or tamper down, or get it all over, get it over quickly, get it fast, get it over with quickly. Uh, but I'm just saying, what they, what they did today, they, they attacked a school in Gaza City, a school, folks. They attacked a school. All right, so the Israelis would come back and say, well, we knew that there were Hamas fighters inside the school. Okay. Okay? Let's say they were. So your policy is, but it is permissible to blow to pieces, to burn, to maim, to mutilate little children just to get one or two guys. Oh, well, that's the boss's fault, Rick. Oh, I know that's the way the, that's the if, if you watch Sean Hannity, if you watch uh, Mark Levine in the United States, that's their attitude. It's the boss's fault. They hit in the school. So, we got here in the United States. You're telling me that if a, 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 a rapist runs into a school to hide, you're telling me that you support your local police killing all the kids in the school to get the rapists? And blowing up the buildings. And blowing up the buildings. Yeah. Is that your policy? Is that the policy you want in your local neighborhood? You want your sheriff or or chief of police to order the destruction of a school to get one criminal? Because that's the mentality of the, of the Israelis. Yes. That the ends justify the means. If we have to kill one, if we, if we have to kill all these kids to get the one guy we're after, that's the way it is. It's, it's worth, worth it to us. Because they don't see the Palestinian children as human. You've got to get this through your head. The, pal the, the Israeli Zionists are Racial, they believe in racial superiority. They absolutely do. They are probably the most racist people on planet Earth right now. And they do not see Palestinians as humans. They see them as subhumans, therefore, they're not committing murder. For them, it's no different than killing rats. That's the way, if you could talk to the Israelis, that's the way they see it. So we killed a bunch of rats today. So what? What are you upset about? They don't see these as children. No. They don't see them as human children. 
All right, brace yourself. We're going to see. This is what happened today. We've got a couple of videos that we'll show you. So this is the aftermath of uh, the IDF bombing at Gaza School earlier today. There are some pretty dramatic images here, folks, so be prepared for that. Um, you would think that this would be a, you know, an isolated incident, but this is a day-by-day -day thing that happened. This is what the Gazan people have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not in favor of terrorists, but neither am I uh, in favor of blowing up little kids in a school. So who's the, bigger who's the biggest terrorist? Well, the, the Israeli forces, the occupation forces here. So Lord, they, and these are real people, folks. Real fathers, real mothers. And, and you can just, even if you don't understand the words, you can understand what he's saying. Why, why, why does this go on? Why, why don't we continue to let this happen? This next one's pretty gruesome. He's going to pull some body parts out of a bucket. All right, body parts of children. Lord help us. Lord help us. Not there you go, John Hagee. That's what you own, John Hagee. And all your Christian Zionists. May the blood of these children be upon John Hagee. Just incredible. The things that, that are allowed. Now, this is a scene from a hospital. Uh, children being treated. And you can see that they're in pain. I mean, how is your heart not moved by this unless you just think that these beautiful babies aren't people? And they do. That's who, exactly what they think. It doesn't matter. Those babies are terrorists in the minds of the of Israelis. May God judge the Israeli regime. May God's judgment strike them. I have no good for them at all. Nothing good to say about them. Absolutely not. Um, the step story task news agency in Russia. The U.S. may use conflict in the Middle East to start World War III, according to Belarusian President Lukashenko. Well, Mr. Lukashenko, the war has already started, but um, I get to drift to what you're saying. Um, what you're really saying is it may go to another level. Right. Because we're, we're already in World War III. Uh, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko warns the United States may use the conflict in the Middle East to start a new world war. Uh, quote, God forbid they may use uh, the situation in the Middle East to unleash a new world war. They are ready to go that far. The uh, Belarusian news agency, of course, Lukashenko is saying at a meeting with the uh, CIS interior uh, ministers. Uh, under the uh, current president, and this is Task News Agency in Russia, under the current president Joe Biden, the U.S. policy in the world seemed to have been arranged somehow, Lukashenko said. It was de it's interesting, isn't it? Yes. Uh, quote, it was determined these are friends and these are enemies. This one is a son of a blank, but ours, and that one is a foe. If the regime changes, it would be like in Afghanistan. It would be exactly like in Afghanistan, not for the first time. They need to unleash some kind of war for the sake of regime change, in the quote. Yes, and he pointed out that he was not indulging in propaganda against the U.S. or some traditional allies of other CIS countries. He said you should be on friendly terms with everyone and build relations with everyone who wants them. But do not waste what we have created in recent years. This largely depends on us, law enforcers. A lot depends on us. This thought occurred to me on the way to this meeting, Lukashenko was added. I'd like the, um, it was an important meeting of Arab nations yes. uh, yesterday. And um, a lot of our Western diplomats were watching that meeting to see which way it would go regarding this possible war between Israel and Iran. Yes. And it did not go in the direction that Western diplomats hoped for. Yes. Uh, even Saudi Arabia backed Iran. And Saudi Arabia and Iran are not the best of friends. They have the Sunni Muslims and the Shia Muslims. Okay. Iran is Shia. Uh, Saudi is uh, uh, Sunni. 
and uh, those are two big factions in, inside the Islamic world. They're not friendly with each That's other generally. Right. But in this case, the Saudis and the other Arab nations condemned Israel and said that it was a gross violation of Iran's sovereignty. And they stopped short of saying Iran has the right to pound Israel, but they also didn't pass a resolution saying they wouldn't, <laughs> saying don't do it. Right. And that's what everyone was waiting to see. Would the Arabs... This, this, in my view, the Arabs gave Iran the green light yesterday. Go ahead and attack. Um, we've got your back. Yes. That's what it says. Let's take a look at, uh, again, this is uh, Al Jazeera uh, headline OIC. says Israel fully responsible for Hamas chief Amaya's killing. And it says the um, Organization of Islamic Cooperation has blamed Israel for the attack that killed Hamas political chief uh, uh, Ishmael Hanaya last week, uh, which uh, Iran has vowed to retaliate. In a statement uh, issued after this extraordinary meeting of the 57-member bloc on Wednesday in Saudi Arabia said it holds Israel, the illegal occupying power, fully responsible for this heinous attack, which is described as a serious infringement on Iran's sovereignty. The Gandhi is the foreign minister, Mamadou Tangera, whose country chairs the OIC, said Anaya's heinous assassination in the ongoing war in Gaza could lead to a regional conflict. The aggression and violation of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Islamic Republic of Iran by the assassination of a political leader on his soul is an act that cannot be viewed in isolation, Tangera said. And this heinous act serves only to escalate the existing tensions, potentially leading to a wider conflict that could involve the entire region. So this is by the whole block here now, the Organization for Islamic Cooperation, staying basically putting it at the feet of Israel. You're responsible for anything that happens from this. And Doctor, at the same meeting, the Saudi Arabians also issued a statement. Uh, this is Times of Israel report Saudi Arabia Kosanaya killing a blatant violation of Iran's sovereignty. Yes, uh, Saudi Arabia said on Wednesday that the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Hanaya in Tehran was a blatant violation of Iran's sovereignty. The comment by the Saudi Deputy Foreign Minister during an extraordinary meeting of its uh, members of the OIC was the first by the kingdom, the region's major power alongside Iran, since the killing of the Palestinian Islamist leader in the Iranian capital on July 31st. The minister, Walid al Raji, added that Saudi Arabia rejects any violation of the sovereignty of states or interference in the in internal affairs of any country. And so, so what's on, the, oh, I'm sorry. You know, the docs, uh, you know, people watching us, listening to us, thinking, well, uh, what's he got to do with us? What, why should I care what they said yesterday at a meeting in, in Saudi Arabia? Uh, here's why. The, the Arab world yesterday coalesced around Iran. Yes. And they said national borders are important to us. National sovereignty is important to us. And not that privately those Arab leaders were saying, what if Israel did it to us? Yes. What if they murdered somebody on our soil? How would we respond? What would be the expected and, response? And what kind of support would we want from you? Our, our fellow Arab brothers. So you know those kind of discussions were going on. What this really means is that the Arab world yesterday said to Iran, we don't like what's happening, but do what you got to do. Right. Now, the uh, Iranian uh, foreign minister, the acting foreign minister, spoke at the OIC, too, and had this to say, currently in the absence of any appropriate action by the UN, Security Council against the aggressions and violations of the Israeli regime. This is important, folks. Listen. The Islamic Republic of Iran has no choice but to use its inherent right to legitimate defense against the aggressions of this regime. That's coming from Ali Bagheri, Iran's acting foreign minister, speaking to the OIC.
So they had no other choice in that viewpoint. And, and, and he wouldn't object to his thing. Nobody objected to it. That's the point we want you to understand. None of the Arab countries objected to the statement. It's, again, they're saying, go do what you got to do. Just get it over with. Get it done. You have to do what you've got to do. There's no resistance in the Arab world to Iran attacking attacking uh, Israel. Look, the entire foreign policy of the United States and Israel for years has been to divide the Arab world. Yes, and in fighting among each other. Pit part of the Arab world against Iran. Yes. All right? Divide and conquer. What Israel has managed to do is unite the Arabs. Yes. And, and Israel's the bad guys now. And, and, and so that's that's the important thing for you to understand here. Uh, another story, this is Haraf's uh, Israel revokes eight Norwegian diplomat status with the Palestinian Authority as punishment for recognizing Palestine. You go against Israel, what happens to you? You get deplatformed. That's what they did to these diplomats from Norway. They deplatformed them. Get out of the country. We're stripping you of your of your diplomatic status. Now, there are several countries that have recognized Palestine. Are they going to strip those diplomatic ties too? I point? think that's where they're going to. Okay. Israel's going to become... They're becoming a, an isolated country. Who's, who is the only, who really is defending them? The United States of America. That's it. Other than the USA, there's really nobody out there with a cheerleader, you know, dance and, and, and song defending Israel. People, other nations are either embarrassed to be uh, defending them because they can't defend genocide or they don't want to get involved in a big bar fight. Right. You got it. So, so this is what happened to Norway today. So Israel informed Norway on Thursday that it is revoking the diplomatic status of eight Norwegian diplomats who worked at the country's mission to the Palestinian Authority in response to Norway's conduct on the Israeli-Palestinian issue in recent months. Now, this move will result in the cessation of Norwegian diplomatic operations in both Israel and the West Bank. So the Norwegian diplomats serving in this mission need to receive official accreditation from Israel for their activities. Now, an official letter sent by the Foreign Ministry to Norway, which was publicized by Foreign Minister Israel Katz, states that in response to the country's pro-Palestinian stance in recent months, Israel has decided to revoke its accreditation of these diplomats, which will effectively put a stop to their activities. Foreign Minister Katz said, there's a price for anti-Israel behavior. Those who attack us and adopt a unilateral policy against us will pay a price. He just comes right out of the open. Put that back up on the screen. Look at what he says it twice. Says, There's a price. You're going to pay a price for opposing us. Who talks like that except gangsters? Okay, you got it. You got gangsters. There's a price to pay. You you come against us, you criticize us, you oppose us. Well, you're going to pay a price. We're not saying what the price is, but you're going to pay a you're price. You're going to pay a price. And that's a warning to every other nation. You support the Palestinians, you're going to pay a price. Yes. And that price includes, we can put a bomb under your bed. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. These are gangsters. The Israeli political establishment is a mafia organization. It's a, these are gangsters that we're dealing with. Well, they used to be called gangs. Yes. The Stern, the Stern, Stern gang. Stern gang. The Irving gang. Doc, uh, Bibi is uh, deeply sorry for his mess up on October 7, but he's not resigning. He's, uh, That's right. But he is sorry. He, he's... Uh, uh, he gave a mag he gave an interview to uh, Time magazine. This is a Jerusalem Post uh, synopsis of that of that interview. Yes. So Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu apologized for his what he's calling his conduct during the October 7th massacre in an interview for Time. During the interview, uh, Mr. Netanyahu was asked if he would apologize for how he functioned in October. Apologize? Like it's a foreign word to him. Apologize? Netanyahu asked back. Of course. Of course. I am sorry deeply that something like this happened and you always look back and you say could we have done things that would have prevented it 
Additionally, Mr. Netanyahu blamed the protesters, specifically the thousands who declared they wouldn't serve in Israeli's military, and said the refusal to serve because of an internal political debate, I think that, if anything, that had an effect. Look at that right there, Doc.